Yokoi Swords Up is Crips, and today I have for you all Warlock Fashion Sets number 16. Now in this video I'll be showing you all 7 of the best Warlock submissions from my Discord, as well as some honourable mentions for sets which are close to winning. And if you want to participate in the next Fashion Sets video which will be for Hunter, then go ahead and join through the Discord link in the description, and submit your best Hunter set into video submissions. But yeah, we'll leave timestamps on screen if you want to skip ahead, and if you do like any of the sets shown then please drop a like, and consider subscribing to the channel and without further delay it's time we get straight into the sets. So starting off with the first submission winner I had to give this one to Notanuba with the Exiled Prophet. Now I actually remember reviewing this set live with Muffin Bandit and we both agreed that this is one of the best Warlock sets that we've seen in a while. Now I could see this set being quite versatile as you really only have to work around the gold on the robes and the great thing about this colour scheme in particular is the fact they all work really well within the Crotic Grip. So so overall it's a fantastic job on the entire set. Now moving on to the pieces they used, like I mentioned the helmet is the Hood of the Exile, which was from the Trials of Cyrus, although it's no longer in the loot pool. Then the arms are the Claws of Amkara Exotic from World Drops. The robes are the Imperial Cartographer robes from the Eververse Archive. The boots are the Righteous Boots which you will sell at some point during the season. And then as for the bondies from the Blood Lineage set from the Festival of the Lost Eververse. Now as for Shaders, you want to use Gold Leaf on the helmet, arms and boots. Gambit Jade stone on the chest plate and gold jade on the bond. Now unfortunately you can no longer obtain any of these shaders used. So yeah it's overall a fantastic set and it's really nice to see the Imperial Cartographer robes in fashion as I feel that these pieces are quite underused. Now as you could see from the cutscene they provided they used the Witch Queen pre-order shell which is a perfect fit for this look. Now there is one thing I would add to this set and that would be the Resurrections Guide. This was the previous sparrow from the Flawless Chest and I feel that both in terms of the way it's designed and the colours it gives off it would have been a perfect fit for this look. But yeah just let me know what you think of the set in the comments below. Congratulations to Notanuber on winning and getting your first title. Now moving on to the second submission winner it goes to Vivanox with the Thrall of the Nine. Now this is an incredible use of the Vesper of Radius Exotic. Now they've also paired a Ghost Shell, Ship and Sparrow which all fit the theme perfectly and this is honestly the best use of this exotic that I've seen in fashion in a very long time. I see a lot more people go with the ornament for this which gives off these really cool glows and that could also work here although you manage to work with the normal look which I'd arguably say is much harder to work with. Now anyways moving on to the pieces they used the helmet is the channeling cowl which is from the prophecy dungeon, the arms are the iron world gloves from a previous iron banner, the robes are the vesper of radius exotic from world drops, the boots are the raft trail ornaments from the eververse archive and then the bond is the judgments wrap which is also from the Prophecy Dungeon. Now as for shaders you want to use Crucible Vermilion on the helmet, Callus is selected on the arms, Cryptic Legacy on the robes and bonds and then Iron Mossbone on the boots. Now unfortunately most of these shaders are no longer obtainable with Crucible Vermilion and Iron Mossbone coming from past seasons, Callus is selected coming from the Leviathan Normal Raid which was removed from the game and then there's Cryptic Legacy which is still obtainable although you must complete the Deepstone Crypt Raid floor so yeah it's overall a fantastic use of different pieces and shaders and I think it was a perfect idea basing it off the 9. But yeah just let me know what you think of this set in the comments below. In terms of difficulty and execution they did a phenomenal job so congratulations Vivanox on winning and getting your first title. Now moving on to the third submission winner I gave it to Monkey Snail with a really nice set using the wings of Sacred Dawn. Now I've actually seen this exotic become more common with these submissions. It really doesn't surprise me as the design itself is really nice and it's quite easy to work with. However this set does take the exotic in a bit of a different direction and go with a nice blue and gold with a little bit of a reddish colour. It creates a really nice contrast especially with the pieces you've picked. I particularly like the choice of boots with the patterning coming down matching really well with the robes and this nice reddish colour really helps these gold patterns stand out and contrast with the blue. But anyways as for the pieces they used the helmet is the Hood of the Great Hunt from the Last Wish Ray 
Raid, the Arms of the Celestial Ornament from the Eververse Archive, the Robes of the Wings of Sacred Dawn Exotic from World Drops, the Boots of the Northlight Ornament from the Dawn in Event, and in the Bond is the Solstice Bond Magnificent from the Solstice Event. Now as for Shaders, you want to use Wicked Overgrowth on the Helmet and Robes, Blood Main on the Arms and Boots, and then Marble Effigy on the Bond. Now you can get Wicked Overgrowth from this season's Iron Banner, as for Blood Main this was from the Festival of the Lost Event, and then unfortunately Marble Effigy is no longer obtainable. So yeah, that is pretty much the entire set. Now there is a Sparrow that I would pair with this, although I can't really remember it in my head. I will leave an image on the screen right now of the Sparrow I'm talking about. And if you haven't noticed as well, on plating the shader creates like a really nice rough texture, which does complement the plating quite nicely on the arms and boots. But anyways, let me know what you think of Monkey Snail set in the comments below. And yeah, congratulations Monkey Snail on winning. Now moving on to the fourth submission winner, I chose Shrigma with a set based off the Wave Splitter exotic. Now as you can see, the Wave Splitter has a very mechanical look, and it is void, so the beam for the Trace Rifle is purple. Now when looking back at the set, you could see they've used the Controverse Hold exotic to replicate that sort of purple beam going down the armor. It is a very difficult exotic to use, and easily one of the hardest ones for the Warlock. Now anyways, moving on to the pieces they used, the Helmet is the Forbidden Visage Ornament, which you can get right now from the Eververse Archive, the Arms of the Controverse Hold exotic from War Drops, the Robes of the Forum Hold from Legendary Engrams, the Boots of Christ the Queen from the Beyond Light Expansion, and then as for the Bond, we have the Beyond, which is also from Legendary Engrams. Now as for Shaders, you want to use Rustberry on the Helmet, Skeletal on the Arms and Robes, Carbon Blood on the Boots, and Iron Gold on the Bond. Now Rustberry and Carbon Blood can sometimes be sold in the Bright Dust Store. As for Skeletal, this is a Shader from the Festival of the Lost Event, and then Iron Gold was from a previous Iron Banner, so is unfortunately no longer obtainable. But yeah, I just really love how you use the Controverse Hold in this set. The Helmet was a great choice as well to complement the round aesthetic of the robes. So yeah, just let me know what you think of Shrigma's set in the comments below. And now it's time to move on to the next submission winner. Now moving on to the fifth submission winner, we have Salty Chemo with the Master of the Void. Using the Hood of the Exile with the Liminal Voyager, which is a combo I haven't really seen that often. Now this is an overall pretty great set, providing a really nice ghost shell ship and sparrow to pair with it. Now anyways, as for the pieces they used, the helmet is the Hood of the Exile, which is from the old Trials of Osiris loot pool, the arms of the Ophidian Aspect Exotic with the Caduceus Ornament, the robes of the Liminal Voyager Ornament from the Festival of the Lost Eververse, the boots of the Shadow Boots from the Crown of Sorrows Raid, which was removed from the game, and then the bonds is the Fragment of the Prime, which is from the Vault of Glass Raid. Now a lot of you may be looking at Watch a Shade and have no idea where this is from, and if you didn't know you could get this shader from gifting 2 subs to a Destiny streamer. It is quite a good shader, although they pretty much used it here just to match it with the robes. Then as for Melchus the Deck Bramble, this is from Bright Engrams and can sometimes be sold in the Bright Dust Store. And then as for Begeeta Knights, this is unfortunately no longer obtainable as it was from Forges. But yeah, your set overall salty is really nice, I love how you paired a Ghost Shell Ship and Sparrow. It really helps complete the look, and especially with the ghost shell with the glows coming off it matching with the bond. And if you wanted to, you could easily switch out the arms on this set and go for the Mind Striders ornaments. This would also work really well, and the glow design of those boots would pair very nicely with the bond. So yeah, just let me know what you think of their void set in the comments below. And congratulations, Salty, on getting your first title. Now moving on to the sixth submission winner, we have another set based off an exotic weapon, and this goes to Mad Junior with the Bad Juju themed warlock. Now you could see that they're also using the Verity's Brow Exotic, with both the Bad Juju and Verity's Brow not being used that much in fashion, so it's quite refreshing and nice to see a set like this. Now as for the pieces they used, like I just mentioned, the Helmet is the Verity's Brow Exotic, the Arms are the Prefectus Gloves from the Season of the Chosen, the Robes and Boots are from the Steeplechase set from the Season of the Chosen Pass, and then the Bond is the Bond of Refuge from Leveling. Now Welded Brass is a shader which can sometimes be sold in the brightest store, and as for ritualism, this is a shader from the season of the splicer pass. So, yeah, it's overall a fantastic look. And if you've played since Beyond Light, then you'll most likely have most of these shaders and armor pieces. It's a really great choice, though, picking a steeplechase with the Verity's brow. It just suits that hive design perfectly, and you can pretty much go with any color with the Verity's brow as long as you keep a little bit of green. And if you exclude the bad juju, 
then you can pair this with any different colour. So yeah, unfortunately they didn't provide a ghost shell ship and sparrow. Although if I were to suggest any, then I would pick the Eris Morn shell as well as the Winchester's Ruined Sparrow. But yeah, just let me know what you all think of this set in the comments below. And congratulations Matt Jr. on getting your first title. Now like always, before I get into the final submission winner, I'm going to be giving some honourable mentions to sets which are close to winning. So this first mention goes to Dawson. Now they didn't state what this set was based off of, but it definitely gives me some Monster Hunter vibes. Then the next mention goes to Oxy with the Great Inquisitor. Now I did originally think this was based off Star Wars, although they did state this more so based off the Warhammer animation of Starties. Then next we have Owen Pappy with a nice and simplistic Void Warlock set. Then next we have 2004 Chevy SSR with a set based off Hazard Play, which if you don't know is a shaded that was introduced into the Brightest Store this season. Then next we have the Legacy of Darkness from Dafu Legend, and this looks to be a set based off Stasis. And then the final mention goes to Shibui with the Technocrat, a very unique lock used in the Storm Dancer's Exotic, definitely one of the more awkward exotics to work with for the Warlock. So yeah, they were pretty much all of the honourable mentions. There were a ton of amazing sets, hence why I picked a few more than usual. The set ideas were really unique and the execution was on point, so congratulations to you all for making it to the mentions. Now as for the final submission winner, this was a really difficult choice. As you just seen with the mentions, they were all very unique and well executed, but there was one that really stood out to me from the submissions, and this one was from Mork. Now this set is called Rasputin's Phoenix, and as you could see by the appearance of the set, I think the execution was absolutely perfect. You definitely captured the look of the Warmind, and the secondary orange really helps give the look of a Phoenix. The set also works really well with this helmet, as if you didn't know, the visor colour cannot shade her, although this blends very well with the secondary colours coming through on the other pieces. Pieces. Now anyways, moving on to the pieces they used, the helmet and arms are from the Pyrrhic Ascent set, which is from the Trials of Osiris, the robes and bond are from the Yuga Sundown set, which you will sell at some point during the season, and then the boots are the Empyrean Cartographer ornaments from the Eververse Archive. Now as for the shade you want to use on the entire set is Genotype Null Zero, which was a shader from the Escalation Protocol and is unfortunately no longer obtainable. So yeah, this set was executed perfectly. I love how this shader gives off a carbon fibre texture on the robes as well, which really helps to match with our robotic design. The only thing I'd say that you could add to this set is a ghost shell ship and sparrow. There are so many amazing weapons and cosmetics that compare with this look. I'd be really interested to see what you all think of this set in the comments, and congratulations Mork on making it into the winning submissions. So yeah, they were the best warlock sets from the fashion competition. Let me know which one is your favourite in the comments below and if you want to participate in the next fashion sets video which will be for hunter then go ahead and join my discord through the link in the description and submit your best hunter set into video submissions now i will also be doing another fashion contest to celebrate the 30th anniversary and this will likely start on tuesday when the event begins but yeah i just want to say thank you to everyone who participated as these videos would not be possible without your submissions. And an extra thank you to the Crips Fashion Crew. I really appreciate you all providing extra support to the channel. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video.